Hi guys, it's pretty windy and cold here in Marul, but I'm staying warm in my free range sailing hoodie and you can grab yours too by clicking the link up there or visiting the description in the video. Hope you enjoy it! The winds had finally eased from 25 knots, so it was time to haul anchor and tack our way out of Island Head Creek. really good run. We're going over seven knots at the moment and we're just got the sail set just a little bit off the wind so we're not quite close hauled and we're all just loving it. We're going really fast. I mean it was a bit hectic getting out. Well it wasn't hard but it was a little bit sloppy getting out of Island Head Creek there um, but now it's good to be a little bit further out at sea and we've got a good line because we've got a fair bit of distance to cover today. Um, we're going to head to North Keppel Island, so we've got another 30 or 40 miles, we'll probably get in uh, at about 8 p.m. tonight.
We'd heard word from our friends Meg and Darren on Sarian that they were at Great Keppel Island, so we sailed off our anchor and headed there to meet them. At times living on our 30 foot yacht can be trying, but it all seems worth it when we get the sails trimmed just right and she's flying along gracefully. A big part of cruising is making friends when you arrive in a new anchorage. And sometimes, that includes dogs too. We wanted to make a fish spear, we've been missing one since we lost our other one. We've scored a bit of spring steel, so now we just need to make the actual spear handle itself. Here's one I prepared earlier. So here's um, a native hibiscus tree. Nice, lightweight, solid, really strong. Um, the inner bark, if you're a bushcrafty sort of person, some people are, uh, makes really great string. But we've peeled all that off at the moment. Here's that, that's the inner bark that I'm talking. We've taken this outer bark, but there's still another layer. You can tell it's going to make really great string because if you tie it in a knot, you, you can't break it, you know. But, so these heart shaped leaves, they do have a yellow flower when they do flower and it looks like a hibiscus, which you can actually eat the flower as well. But they make pretty good lightweight fish spears. Probably want to, wouldn't want to use them for too much more heavier, but once we straighten this thing out, she should be good. How are you going there, Darren? Ah, oh, pretty good. I reckon I might as well make one while uh, I've got the experts here. So, here's some of the inner bark that we were talking about before. And you can separate the strands out. Use it as bush string, it plait it together. That long now. You can tie things up with it. Usually, like um, a clove hitch is a really great one to use with this if you're making like a bit of bush furniture or whatever. A pretty useful old tree. The dazzle giving it some depth there. <laughs> clove hitch is a good one to go with. Well, it's been a pretty good day, hasn't it, Passy? The uh, we don't feel like we're going through a famine at the moment. We've got. Coconuts, it's pretty good. We've got a crayfish here, nice green cray. The other one I got was just a touch smaller than this, but that's been given away as a gift. Nice and prickly, that one. <laughs> and we've got, um, you pretty fairly say that that's a pretty hefty trout. So, we've got enough food to keep us going for a little while. Crayfish, lobster, coconut, it's all very tropical. Right. I've got my work cut out for us now, we've got to knock the sides off these. And we better tidy up this cockpit because it's too small to be this messy. Mm. Um, and then what, we're going to meet everyone on the beach at five for a little bit of a... a cook up. Bit of a cook up. And I do, I do want to... You know what else I want to do there while we're there, Pasky? It's mm -hmm. just... So there's that stick that we got earlier that... Um, like you, like you called it, the, the rosewood or the beach hibiscus. 
Um, I wouldn't mind just seeing if we could just straighten that out a little bit and turn it into more of a spear rather than just some random stick. And how are you going to do that? You'll see. Are you going to bring a camera? I will. All right. So I'm just going to heat up where the bends are and then try and hold. You, you heat them up until the, the liquid in there has sort of turned to steam and softened the timber. And then you apply a bend, a counter bend to what's already there. You try and get it to the shape that you want and just hold it there till it cools. And in that way you can fairly straighten it out. Don't, don't even think someone at my skill level is going to get this um, perfectly straight. You know, for a fish spear it doesn't have to be because you sort of, you find where the balance is and you, you throw it and all you're trying to do is get the spikes at the end into the fish. It doesn't have to look that, that fancy, but we want to try and get it fairly straight. There's a bit of a junk pile here and we're lucky enough to find some, um, some old beds that were on the heap. Um, so I got into them and you know when they talk about spring mattress beds, well, in there you'll often find nice long lengths of spring steel. Okay, this is not just normal steel. This will rust, um, so we'll have to address that living on a boat. But we saw the um, islanders up north, what they really like to make their spears out of is spring steel. We did have some a stainless one, didn't we, Pasky? And it, it didn't rust and it did catch fish, but it wasn't ideal. When this actually gets a bit of corrosion on, all you need to do is sharpen it. You don't need to put a barb on it um, and it holds the fish really well. So I've got I got seven of them. So just like the, um, the strands that make up our rigging, with seven, you have sort of um, one in the center. Let me just make them all even. You have one in the center and then the other six go around it really nicely. So we'll be able to put a hole in the end of that wood and we'll be able to jam those down that hole really, really well and then bind it nice and tight. And then in the end, we'll have that sharpened sticking out the other end. Nice. It was a fair while ago now, but we had an old episode, uh, what's it called, Radioactive Lobster? Yeah, Let's go. episode five. Ep he really? Yeah. That was a while ago. We dealt with um, with crayfish, how to kill them and stuff like that. I, I think one thing that we missed, if you pulled the tail off your lobster at that time, um, I actually cut around the anus here, so when you pull it, the, the poo shoot, Okay, the, the lower intestine comes out with it. But a lot of people won't, they'll just run the knife up into the body, like that. This is with the tail when it was still on. Around like that, and then twist the tail out and you get all that meat. But what happens is you've still got the poo shoot inside, okay, the lower intestine. Don't worry, a crayfish comes with a way of getting that out. So at the end of the, um, the antenna here, you can see that the, all the spikes are running that way towards my right hand. So we can snap off a bit. And put it in there. Don't worry, it's long dead. I can feel the thing. <laughs> Just pop it up there. Give it a bit of a twist. There we go. It just pulls it out for you. It's easier than even dealing with a prawn, isn't it? There we go. I'm, um, I'm putting all the scraps and stuff into a bucket. We've got an anchorage here and there's, there's people swimming, there's lots of little kids jumping in the water and things like that. So normally we'll just, we'll just throw things straight back over and we'll swim there, we'll quite happily, but um, just as a bit of a courtesy, I suppose, I'm not gonna attract the local sharks in here for an exciting breeding frenzy, so. There we go, so we've got the poo shit out and then all that remains is just the stuff at the top. We'll just give it a bit of a clean out. I've got the trusty hose there and I'll give it a spray and then um, this is ready to roll. And we'll see what Pascal does with it sometime in the very near future.
radical one, that one. Mm. I reckon that dog leg will, she's just too densely packed in there for this kind of bending. You don't want to break it. I don't want to break it, so what I'll do is I'll just try and get that gentle bend out of the end. And as long as everything's in one sort of line, it doesn't matter if it sort of deviates a bit, as long as the, where the points come, it all goes in. They're pretty forgiving though. It's like not a spear that you're javelining 100 metres. Yeah, proper bush cooking. Fake bush cooking. Fish is smelling good. So Meg has put on all these beautiful vegetables. <laughs> Ooh, curse of the veggie eaters. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> Coming along nicely in the corner. Thank you for watching Free Range Sailing this week. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to give it a like as it really helps get the video out to more like-minded folks on YouTube. A reminder that you've only got a very short window to grab your Free Range Sailing t-shirt or hoodie. So make sure you head on over to our bonfire campaign by clicking on the link on the screen or in the description of the video. Also, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to stay notified of all our upcoming videos.